as my addiction or my relationship to cannabis grows grew stronger it's sort of like the octopus on the rock you know as each tentacle moved towards cannabis you know one tentacle moved away from the rock and and so i started to lose my relationships to what was holding me to any sort of grounding point lost i had no sense of any future i had no sense of me i was lost i was dying and i didn't know i was dying so that's a big change you know that's from death to death one where i didn't know i was dying one where if i died today i'd be happy i don't want to die today but i'd be content feeling that i'm full the signs were there the signs were already there um bef before i'd used drugs and alcohol i'd gone to university i'd started my personal hygiene habits had already started to erode and and I wasn't looking after myself at the age of 16, 17. So prior to using any alcohol and drugs, that pattern had already been set. So by the time I picked up cannabis, I think all it did was amplify the existing unwellness that exist, that was there, that was present. I got out of treatment in 1989. I entered treatment, I think in January, came out just after April. I came back to Gisborne for four and a half years. And then I decided and, and got very involved. I started with a friend of mine, we started the NA group in Gisborne, him and, him, and, him and I in a room for a year, keeping each other clean, not really, you know, not really having a program because we really had no one to guide us. Um, so we did the best we could. And that kept us clean. Loved it, loved it. Oh my God, loved it. You know, I mean, I relapsed after eight and a half years clean and I loved it again. It was so intense, that love, it's a complete, love like there's no hate about it it's just a love relationship and that's what makes it so powerful so destructive for me because that becomes more important than my relationship to me you know and and to lose myself in a relationship to tetrahydrocannabinol rather than have a relationship with myself and something i guess bigger than myself and if i look at my use compared to some of the people that I've worked with today, um, my use was pretty small. I might have used maybe two to three times a week, um, maybe maybe two bullets a week, maybe about six joints a week. My last sponsor, I felt, when I came back into the rooms, um, and, and that would have only been in 2006, see, I felt that he loved me back to health. And that's what I feel those rooms do. They love people back to health. The love that's generated in that program helps people who have, carries the, the, the hope when they're feeling hopeless, carries the, the, the um, carries the faith when they're feeling faithless. It carries a lot um, for people. When I first came into recovery, um, my recovery community was my whole community. Um, today I have other communities, you know, my children are at school, so I have, a, I have a relationship with the parents there and great friendships. And amongst my school community, I've got a work community that I have fantastic, really deep connection with and some of those people there have been incredibly helpful to me over the years. And, and I've got a recovery community and my family, you know, so I've got a lot of different tentacles now and, uh, that, that hold me very solid.